Hello, my creative peeps, and oh, my hair, classic land. Hello, my creative peeps, and welcome back for today's video. Today is the May installment of the I Try Your Wishlist Supplies series, and today we are taking a look at the Pigment Deco Brush Markers by Karen. I don't know a ton about these, but I've seen them kind of buzzing around, and a lot of the videos I've seen are of people like, getting sponsored by them or being sent them for free. So I'm very excited to kind of try these out today. Now the request was for the pigment deco brush and that was the one that my patrons had voted as the supply to try. However, since, uh, you know, we were in that ballpark, I figured I would also give the um, brush marker pros a try. And originally I had thought these were alcohol markers and they're not. Uh, which I was very excited to see. So we're going to test those out as well. And I will, of course, as always, give you my honest opinion. These were purchased with my own money, so no one's paying me to say any of these things. Let's uh, experiment with these together, shall we? So the Pigment Deco Brush, it's supposed to be like a paint pen, but with a flexible brush tip. Let's see if my camera will focus on it so you can see. So there we go. It's uh, like a felt brush tip, and they're very popular, I guess, in the lettering world, but we're going to try to use them in our journal here. It says they're water-based, non-toxic, suitable for most services, easy color blending, opaque color system, acrylic permanent ink, and flexible brush tip. One thing I was surprised to see when I opened the caps of these is unlike a paint marker they're already kind of primed so it's just like a regular marker you would open up they're kind of already ready to go um it does say to shake before use which i can definitely see why it does separate here you can kind of see the paint has separated in the barrel but i just uh open stock purchased a few colors they are on the pricier side to be expected for paint markers i'm just going to shake a few of these up and we'll get our kind of our first impressions and then i will go away and play with them for a little bit and give you my uh thoughts thereafter let's take a look at this here i have canary cool aqua duck egg rosewood which is like an orange apple antique pink and pastel violet blue um i tried to kind of match the colors that i usually like to use so we'll see how we did so i just said what color this was this is canary and i do have a little bit of oh my of bleed through from the other page so bear with me All right, definitely a smooth writing experience. Uh, that is not very opaque. That's the cool aqua. It's very flexible tip. It will be, it's definitely like a brush pen. It will be interesting to see how those wear over time. It did feel a little scratchy. This is duck egg. This one's juicy. So far, I wouldn't exactly call this super opaque. Uh, it definitely <laughs> looks a little translucent, especially that aqua color. You can definitely see the paper through. So I don't know about this opaque people, but they tried, right? They're also kind of oddly dry. I wanted to love these so much, but so far I'm very skeptical. I'm not quite sure. So 
is antique pink. Maybe they'll uh, juice up a little more as I continue to use them and the paint flows down maybe. This is apple. It's very nice green. If anything, I enjoy the color palette that I chose. <laughs> Can't really give them credit for that, but I didn't do a swatch for the yellow. The yellow is very juicy. This is rosewood. I do use my paint pens a lot for titles and things in my journals, so I'm excited to see how these work out. This is black, which I'm very particular about my blacks. It is very inky, so high hopes for that one. And I accidentally ordered two of these, so... <laughs> I guess I can't be too mad. And then these are the pro markers. So these are just, uh, it says it's for calligraphy, graphic design, illustration. Uh, they're the same brush tip, but I think it's kind of just like a, a marker. There's not much to say on it compared to, you know, all the information on the deco art. So let's see, this is ocean teal. Definitely a lot wetter. It's an ink rather than a paint, which you can definitely tell by how the paper is reacting because my paper is not so great. Kind of just reminds me of a Tombow marker, but a little juicier. A little more fancy feeling. And then this is also Canary. And let's label these three so we don't get confused. These are the Brush Marker Pros. Alright, so it looks like the paint markers didn't bleed through, but the other ones definitely did. But this is the paper most things bleed through those are the colors let's see first impressions uh i like how they feel in your hand i think it's very cool that you don't have to activate them i'm a little skeptical about this uh opaque claim they do seem very like it's not one solid color some are a little juicier than others i like the colors and I'm excited to see how it works. I will take some time to play with these. I'll do some tests with water. Uh, and then I'll come back and kind of give you my final thoughts here. But uh, let me jump down below if you... Do you have these? Do you like them? What have you seen about them? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. So, all right. Here we are. It's a couple weeks later. Uh, what did I think? <laughs> uh, let's start with what I use them for. I tried my best to experiment with using these in different ways. So I went ahead and I used the brush pen just to write. Uh, so I wrote my header with this green one here. I used a couple of different colors to do these doodle flowers and the leaves, which were really fun. Let's see, uh, here's another title, more titles with them. These stars are done with uh, that same pen. This title's done with that. I also used it to do these uh, black lines over here on top of this glossy uh, candy wrapper. I thought it would be a fun test to do with it and it actually stayed. So that was pretty impressive. Uh, I have used the paint markers as well in some of my other journals. They're more personal, so I don't really 
particularly want to show you, so I do apologize for that. I'm just checking to make sure there's nothing else in here that I particularly use them for. Uh, but I did use them over glossy stuff. I used them over a photo. Uh, basically, I did everything with them that I would have done with a regular paint marker. And they work, guys. <laughs> They're... They do what they say they're gonna do. They, they are permanent. I mean, you can scratch it off of a glossy surface like those candy wrappers, for instance, but once you put it down, it doesn't move with water at all, like no budging. As you saw, I was able to do these flowers. So I layered the markers over each other and none of it like transferred onto the other marker or ran, which, you know, being a paint marker is what you would expect. So I really, really enjoyed that. Overall, I'd say they are very comparable to the Posca markers. I would say that sometimes they appear a little less opaque, especially some of these more pastel colors. I don't know if that's the case with a lot of colors that aren't so pastel-like, but they do seem to have a little bit of a transparency to them. They're not completely opaque, but they do a fantastic job nonetheless. Obviously, writing with them is what they do best. The markers are originally made as lettering markers, to my understanding. So, I mean, they, they hit the nail on the head. That's what they do, and they're good at it. Uh, they can be fun when you're doodling because you can get varying line widths within the same kind of brush strokes. See, matte waterproof works on most surfaces. Brush tip. They dry really fast, which I really appreciate. You can write over them with pretty much anything. They're everything that I would expect them to be, except especially at the price that they are at. And initially I was like, oh my gosh, these are so pricey because you often see them sold in a set. But then I actually went and compared them to the Posca paint pens and they're only a couple cents more per marker than the Poscas are, which was surprising for me to find out because of the tip. Uh, they also have this like super aesthetically pleasing clear body. So you know, when your supplies look nice, you kind of want to reach for them more. It's one of the reasons why I really like these Arteza markers. Uh, this is another paint marker I do enjoy. These Arteza markers are the most affordable out of my favorite. These are $1.35 a piece roughly when you buy them in a large pack. But I mean, overall, they're good paint markers, you guys. Uh, I did list a couple cons, although they're not like huge deal breakers. One thing I did find a little frustrating was uh, if you are writing fast or say you're trying to color in an area, they do like dry out. Like the paint can't go into the tip fast enough. So you end up with like a really dry, uh, scratchy look. You can tell best with the blue. So if you're coloring a large area, it'll start out really juicy and then it gets kind of scratchy when the paint starts to run out. Again, they're made for lettering, so this isn't like the company's fault or anything. It's just something to note, you know, with however you use them. If you're going to be coloring large areas, that may be something that starts to bug you a little bit. I certainly found I had to be mindful of slowing down uh, or I got, you know, frustrated with this scratchy type thing. Another con I had was uh, just I'm not sure how the brush will wear over time. I have a feeling they're going to get kind of frayed. I don't know if you can see on the tip there but I've been using this for about two weeks and you can see how it's kind of breaking apart and like peeling a little. I don't know if that will continue to happen or if it will affect the way that the paint marker performs. So that's not something I'm super sure about. I'll have to see as they go and kind of update you uh, as time wears on. I have been keeping them on my desk and reaching for them over some of my other paint pens. So that says a lot right there since that's like my favorite thing. <laughs> uh, my only other issue with them is it's hard to get fine details. Uh, you know how other paint markers, they come in varying sizes. You can get fine points and uh, thick ones and things. Uh, these only come in, of course, the one style because they are a brush. <laughs> so you can get varying line widths with one tip, which is a pro. But if you want something super fine, this definitely isn't going to be the best choice. Those are my thoughts on the Karen Pigment Deco brush markers. I would definitely say at $4 a piece, I would go ahead and do the open stock. 
uh, and buy colors that you know you're going to use and enjoy rather than buying a set, especially since the sets seem to be color families, unless you have a hard time picking colors uh, and you might want to go that route. Uh, but they are, they're an investment, but I think that, um, again, like I said, they're, they're not much more expensive than the Posca paint markers, uh, and hopefully they'll last as long. I will definitely have to update you on that and see, see how fast I can burn through this black one here, because that'll be the test, right? So kind of a quick side note before we end here, I did want to talk about the brush marker pros. On the paper, they do move a little bit with water after they're dry but not a lot. I would say they're most comparable to the Tombow markers. That's basically, in my understanding, what it is. It's an aesthetic Tombow marker. Uh, a pro to these would be, against the Tombow markers, would be that they fit in, you know, a pencil case, unlike the Tombows. Uh, when I did my research for this singles, they came out to about the same price, and you seem to be able to use them in the same way. Again, it's only one tip, you have varying widths that you can get with the one tip because of the way it is, but there's no fine tip like there is on a Tombow. So overall, um, I was quite skeptical, to be honest, when I first saw these and kind of looked at the price and I was like, this can't be, you know, as good as they say, especially since a lot of the reviews I looked at online were of people who were kind of uh, sponsored or given them for free. But I do have to say they're they're pretty great. They're not better than their counterparts, I don't think, unless you're really into lettering. If you already have Poscas and Tombos uh, or similar supplies like that, these aren't going to be huge game changers for you. Again, like I said, unless you're into lettering. But as someone who just uses these in their journal as a supply, if you like the aesthetic and you want to invest in a couple colors to try it yourself, I'd say go for it. They're a solid four and a half stars, and the only reason they didn't get five was because I'm not quite sure how that... A uh, brush tip is going to wear, and I'm not a fan of the fact that the paint doesn't come out faster. But other than that, they're they're great. Thank you to those of you who suggested these and voted for me to try these. Uh, I was really happy to be able to get something off of my wish list uh, and test it out with you guys. Let me know if you have any further questions about these. I'm always happy to answer them in the comments below or in a future video. Thank you guys so much for being here. Please do not forget to leave your requests for the next installment of this series below. Uh, I've been operating off a long list, but it's getting pretty short now. So if you have a supply you would like to see me try within this series, please pop it down below and I will add it to the uh, list that my patrons vote on every month. Again, like I said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for commenting. It really means the world to me and helps out my channel in a free way, which I just so greatly appreciate. If you enjoyed it, uh, those comments really do help. So thank you so much. Thank you to my patrons for sponsoring today's video. They help make what I do over here on YouTube possible while still paying my bills and feeding my dog Shadow. So a huge thank you to them. And with all that being said, I'll catch you guys in my next one. Take care, guys.